Hi guys, Drea with Aloha Plant Life here. Welcome to part three of my living room plant tour video. If you've watched the other two videos, you are probably aware that this was shot is all one video, but ended up being pretty long. So I decided to break it up into three parts for you. So parts one and two are already up on YouTube and available for you to go watch if you have not watched them yet. But with that said, why don't we just head right into the plants in part three. Okay, we are gonna move on to the back of the couch. And full disclosure, these plants are not meant to be li living on the back of the couch. They wouldn't fit on the shelves and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna be doing in my bedroom in terms of shelves on my wall there. And so that is gonna kind of determine, sorry guys, trying to move stuff out of the way. And it's hard for me to get over here right now because here's Toby. Say hi, Toby. Resident jungle cat Toby's like, please, I'm trying to sleep, don't film me. All right, well, it's hard to film around you, but you're super cute. We love you. Okay. Oh, big yawn. Roar. All right. So yeah, these are kind of hanging out here for now. These are my ficus elasticas. I have my ruby, which called ruby because you can see that ruby coloring, and my teneke, which has that white, more white coloring. These are directly in the south-facing window, and they love it. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you about ficus uh, Lassica is not wanting that much bright light. They absolutely love it. I mean, look at that variegation. Just look at that. And look at before she was in that window. Nowhere near as variegated. Absolutely loving life here. I accidentally damaged that leaf. That's why it looks like that. Um, so ignore that. <laughs> it was mom's fault. Ruby almost died of root rot when I first bought her. She had been overwatered and I didn't realize it. And I did a emergency treatment on her was really thinking she wasn't going to make it but then here we are i've already had to repot her twice since then that happened back in i think may or june and she's just she's 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 a survivor she's thriving these plants i find to be low maintenance some people say that the teneki is a little bit higher maintenance i have not experienced that i let them get pretty dried out you guys like probably at least halfway down sometimes even longer than that these leaves will also show you when they need water they will start to really curl under i would not wait that long on this plant for that to happen just want you to know that that's a surefire way to know that it needs to be watered but yeah, I, like I said, probably only wait till they get about halfway dry and then I water them and I've had very good luck with that. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. They grow outdoors, like in Florida and places like that in bright, bright sun. So why anybody thinks they can't live next to a southern facing window is beyond me. They obviously love it. And I will be notching these here soon to create um, offshoots so that they won't be just a single stem tree. And just so you know, you guys, these will be trees one day. I know they're small right now, but they are trees. They will get big. So if you don't want big plants, maybe don't get these because they're gonna get really big or maybe get them now and then gift them to somebody who can have big plants. They get too big for you and then you can go get another one or you can propagate them. Really, really love them. They're so cute. I love them together. So. I'm probably gonna put them together with whatever I do in my bedroom, but if you see them in the bedroom video tour in the future, don't be like, hey, she said those were living in her living room. They're just kind of here temporarily till I figure that situation out. I only have a few more plants left. I'm going to, let's see, let's, I'm kind of worried about the lighting here because it's getting a little darker. Hopefully you guys can still see. Let me kind of give you one second to clear a path and then we'll pick this back up. No lie, you guys, I totally just kneeled down on a pair of um, gardening shears. That was not fun. Luckily, I am not bleeding, but I was using it to harvest leaves off of my Dichondra silver falls, which is what you're looking at right now. I'm gonna try to get closer. It's The lighting's just gonna be bad if I zoom all the way out, but she's a huge plant, so <laughs> the only way I'm gonna get this to go better is if we get in um, close here so that you can see better with the lighting. Hopefully this is reading okay. So she is a beautiful, beautiful plant. She's got these soft, fuzzy stems and leaves and they're this bluish green silver color. I absolutely love her. She is one of my favorite plants. She puts off this lovely smell. 
It doesn't smell like eucalyptus, but it, that's kind of my best comparison to say is like, you know how eucalyptus puts off that very distinctive smell? She has a very distinctive, lovely smell, like plants that do that, but it does not smell like eucalyptus. If you're one of those people who can't stand the smell of eucalyptus, don't worry about it. She does not smell like eucalyptus. I'm just using that to compare the fact that she does have a very nice odor. Odor sounds bad. Scent, fragrance. You're not stinky. Actually, she's a little bit weird smelling right now because she has had a mealybug problem. Damn you, mealybugs. I didn't realize she had them once again when I bought her, but look how luscious she is. And she has gotten crazy long, and I have chopped her back like multiple times since I got her. So when you see what she looked like originally, this is like I've, I've taken at least a foot, maybe two feet off of her since I got her. That's how much she just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And she gets these tiny little flowers. Let me see here. Well, that one's already, nope, that one's it. Come on, camera. Work with me here. It might not want to let me do it because they're so tiny, but she gets these itty bitty little flowers that maybe you can kind of see here. And then they turn into seeds. I really want to get close up on one for you guys here. Let's try this one down here. You see that? It may not focus well, but so that was a flower. Now it's turning into a seed there in the middle. And I harvest these seeds. There we go. And I grow let them dry and then I break them open, get the seed out and I grow more of her. And I'm actually using those seeds to try to fill in the top of her because of the mealybug. She has gone a little bit bald compared to what you will see that she originally looked like up top. Let me get up here once again. Sorry about the unsteady camera. So look at this, she used to be full on top. I know you couldn't see it in the original picture of her, but we've been fighting the bugs. And I think we might have finally won. I say that and then there's probably going to be one in this video. But anyway, so I'm trying to fill her in by planting her seeds in the top. And look, it's working. See all that green growth right there? All where those thin little leaves are? Those are all her seeds that I planted back up in the top. And they're growing. They're going to help fill her back in. And those are going to vine over the sides. And when they vine over the sides, they're going to help fill in some of this thinning, balding look here. So we're basically growing her some new hair to layer over the top to match all of her beautiful, luscious hair that she still has all down at the bottom, right? I do think of it as kind of like hair, right? But anyway, she's just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I mean, look at that. It's a full sun plant. It just gives you all those jungle vibes just trailing there. And it, once again, you saw in the original picture like how full the top was. I'm gonna get her back to that point. I will say, I think she's a little higher maintenance than what you read online will lead you to believe. I have to water her like clockwork every fourth day right now. And when we weren't in winter, it was every third day. And I mean like to the hour, you guys, or else these leaves start to get droopy and cup-like and dry. And I'm still having some issues with dried out leaves. But I think once again, this is just from the bug issue and all the like stuff I've had to spray her down with to try and get rid of the bugs. So, but other than that, very beautiful. Obviously a gorgeous trailing plant, also used a lot outdoors for ground cover or spilling out of pots and full sun, full sun plant. Excellent, excellent plant. Um, a lot of people use it to replace their grass so they don't have to mow. And I mean, why not? Wouldn't you want to look at this? And it's so soft, you guys. I don't even know how to tell you how soft she is. But anyways, absolutely love her. Highly recommend. Super easy to propagate. I actually just soil propagate her. I'll cut in a clip of what I did. I, I put that box with that Tupperware underneath her with a pot of soil on top. And I just laid this in there and pinned a few of them in place um, that I felt like weren't really in the soil enough. And I left it there for like two weeks. And then I cut off up here and it was already fully rooted and it's growing a whole nother beautiful new plant. So fun, fun plant, propagate from seeds, propagate from soil layering. I've cut her and put her in pots and she's grown like Super, super wonderful, easy, easy plant. Just remember that you do have to water her pretty much on a very strict schedule, but maybe that's good for you guys. That's easier than trying to guess whether your plant needs water, right? I think so. All right, two more plants, you guys, and then we're done. I know it's kind of been a long video, but this is where most of my plants live right now. And this one's probably not going to stay here. This is, well, neither of these. This is also kind of a temporary situation. We do have the chain of hearts here, which I'm sure so many of you are familiar with. I was just so happy to find one. I haven't seen any in this area, and this one actually had some decent growth on it. I do think this is another 
propagation situation that they were trying to sell as a fully rooted plant, which is not the case. I don't want to totally call out the grower here, but I'll tell you another reason why I think that's not the case. I wonder if I can do it without you seeing. All right, good. You can't see who's selling this, but this says it's a string of pearls slash turtles. And it is definitely not a string of pearls or turtles because you just saw what those look like. So I think they were propagating from a plant they owned and then trying to sell it. That is my opinion. But since I haven't been able to find one, I was like, okay. And it is a fast grower. I don't know if you'll be able to tell much of a difference from the original picture. I did get this in January. But yeah, this is all new growth down here. You can see there's new growth coming in on the bottom. It is another almost kind of woody stemmed plant. Uh, similar to the Hoya curtisii, it is a succulent-like plant. So once again, these leaves are very um, thick. And when they start to get to where I can bend them more, then that's a good sign that it needs to be watered. But it does like to completely dry out. It is very easy to propagate. That's why I think this person or this place just propagated their own plant or something. But you see that kind of yellow ball in there. If you have those, those are the... Oh my gosh, you guys, it just blinked. Rhizomes? Rhizomes? If I have it wrong, I'll flash it on screen. Those will start to develop along these when it gets older. As you have those in a cutting and you stick them in soil, you're good to go. This plant will grow. And yeah, this, this is, like I said, relatively new. It also was in an outdoor space that was kind of built like a greenhouse, but it wasn't really heated. And it was like 34 degrees outside when I bought this plant. It was so cold just and it had been watered recently and just holding it. I was like, it's freezing. I didn't think it was going to survive, but it's growing and it's doing well. And it definitely is bigger and better looking than some of the ones I have seen since I bought this that really look even more like not, not even remotely rooted cuttings. But yeah, these fun little heart shaped leaves and they do get kind of a reddish color at times on the back. None of these really have it super red right now to where you can see there's a little bit red on that one. Full sun plant, definitely, once again, you need the light on top to make sure it doesn't go bald. This one I am probably going to have to do some of my own propagating as it gets longer and replanting up top to try to fill it in and make it look more full, but I will get it there eventually. And I will probably make this one hanging. I just need to find a pot I like and figure out where I'm gonna hang it. But yeah, so Serapagio woodii is the scientific name for this one, but string of hearts, or chain of hearts is what it's called. There's also a similar variety that's called a string or chain of spades where the leaves are much more of a spade shape. They're longer and uh, pointier, but definitely an easy to care for plant because once again, you just let it dry out and then water it deeply and move on. Also great for like, if you're going out of town, right? Because then you don't really have to worry about somebody coming to water your plants. So I think that's all I had to say about that one. So then we have our Begonia Maculata. This plant, oh my gosh. Once again, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this thing has taken off like mad. I originally had it on the mantle and it wasn't really growing or doing anything. So I moved it to the back. Oh, actually I moved it. Hey, look at my computer, where my computer is. And then slowly moved it over to the back of the couch because as soon as I put it here, it went crazy. It started putting out all kinds of new growth. I'm gonna try and come at it from this other angle. So I really want to get up in here so that you can see how amazing these polka dotted leaves look. Look at all of those polka dots and that bright red coloring on the back side of those leaves. It just really, really is a absolutely gorgeous plant and it has just been growing like mad. It just keeps taking off. I've already propagated her four times from random little offshoots that have just shot off crazy all over the place and she just keeps putting out new offshoots, including this one in the very middle here. This actually came up straight out of the bottom, shot up, and it's already gotten another new branch going. Um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna have to propagate her again soon because it's getting a little bit crazy, but that's okay. I really kind of like it because she, she kind of becomes this very sculptural element. So before that branch in the middle shot up, I feel like we're getting a little blown out there. Let's see if I can get this lighting adjusted. There we go. This whole shape here was just this nice little S shape and it was really interesting and I don't really know why she is growing that way, why this one is going down. There's nothing like blocking the light because that's kind of what you see sometimes with plants if the if they're blocked with like blinds or closed at the top half of the window or something, they'll grow down 
and under to try to get to the window and get to the light, but that's not the case with her. I mean, I don't know. She's, she's just going to be wild. She's going to be wild and I absolutely love it. I'm just going to let her do her wild thing. She is, uh, well, I will say regarding the growth pattern though, you do want to rotate her pretty frequently or rotate this plant if you have this plant because the growth is kind of like the Monstera. It follows the light pretty quickly. And so these leaves will rotate pretty fast to whichever direction is facing the window. So make sure you're rotating regularly to keep that growth nice and even. And then as far as care goes, high, high humidity. This plant's really not super difficult, I feel like, to, to care for, but it, it does have some kind of finicky things. So high humidity it wants. My humidity in here right now is really not what it prefers. Summertime it is okay, but right now you can see I'm getting some of these crispy brown tips on the leaves. And that's because uh, she would prefer it to be a slightly more humid in here. But it's not that bad. It's not that noticeable unless you're like all up in the business like I'm being right now. It is um, very close in color to the the rest of the leaf. It's not like how on some plants it, it's just obviously brown and like crispy. So and from back here, you know, you can't even tell. So I don't really worry too much about that. Keeping her moist is also important. She does not really like to dry out at all in my experience. So I just let the top part of the soil, just just the very, very top, top part of it, get dried out before I water her again. Easy to propagate, so easy. You just take a cutting right below a node, pop her in water, and it will root pretty quickly. And then you just pot it up in soil and it just takes off and keeps growing and growing and growing. Just absolutely love this plant. Some places sell this plant as an annual. I have no clue why. Don't treat it like an, an annual, you guys. But yeah, also known as an angel wing or polka dot begonia. But just, I mean, just look at those leaves. So pretty, so fun. And I never know what to expect. All right, you guys. Well, that is all of the living room plants currently. Plus the Toby. Toby. So really hope you enjoyed this. I know it was kind of a long video, but yeah, I hope it was educational. I hope you enjoyed seeing the plants and seeing like the difference over time and know that your plants can look that way too, especially if you have bright, big Southern facing windows. And obviously having a cat that doesn't eat your plants is always a bonus, little sleepy head. All right, you guys, if you have not hit subscribe or like, below on the screen please do so to help me continue to grow my community and my channel and continue to produce content for you and once again you can follow me and toby and all the plants on instagram or facebook at aloha plant life and i look forward to seeing you again next time aloha